Hey guys, welcome to the PC Perspective Podcast. This is episode 628, being recorded on May 12, 2021. I'm Sebastian Peek. I'm Jeremy Hallstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. I'm Brett Van Spruenberg. We're all, we're, we're here. We're back. We made it another week. We're all still alive, I think. You can find out when we go live most of the time by going to pcper.com slash subscribe. Join our exciting mailing list. Be one of the few, the proud, who get spammed by PC Per, but only for the purposes of finding out when we go live. We promise. We've made that promise for years, and I think... I think it's still true, right, Brett? Is it still I, true? Yeah, I think it's I think it's still true. I don't think we've really unintentionally spammed anyone. There have been a few people who've mm-hmm. been unable to use to uh, use the unsubscribe link, but I've gone oh. in and kind of manually. Why would you do that? Help them out. You're not allowed to unsubscribe. You'll never. <laughs> I don't know. No. Once you know, you maybe are, sometime. <sighs> maybe sometime. Well, we yeah. should throw everybody for a loop and do something like on a Monday. Mm. Yeah. We almost you know we do like yesterday. you know we, we used to do Xbox teardowns and PS4 teardowns and well if if you could buy like a PS5 we could have done one of those but <laughs> Sony released their own teardown and then everybody knew what it looked like and it's just no. not as exciting anymore oh. I, I miss a non sure tearing down the the Wii and like breaking things like, those were the exciting days what was that the Wii U mm. uh, those were we've the got days plenty of stuff to take apart so true. I mean it's we just can gonna be older stuff. Uh, some of it, I mean, some of it's like new, but I'm like, oh, well, I could take this apart. I, could, I think I can put it back together again. So I'm oh. a soldering iron. I know which end is hot. Yeah, you found out the hard way. Yeah. No, you just Multiple use your tongue. Times. That's how he tells no, that's electricity. That's nine volt batteries. Oh, right. Exactly. That's what you use your tongue for. By the way, I thought you were supposed to grip the electricity to see if it was. Are you guys right. like single or something? By the way, speaking of tongues, go to patreon.com slash pcper and help support the site. Become a, I don't know what, a Vibrant? patron. A pa- I think it's a, called a patron. Become a patron it is, it's, it's of a patron. the PC Per Arts. Right? Do we have any news on that front? You know, actually we do. And I just want to say that um, I'm going to really mess this person's name up, but I'm going to try my best because I also have a name that's 14 letters in a space. Sean E. Scott. Gozilas, Gozilas. That's terrible, but I mean, it's I, I try like my best. Shekless, Shek. It's yeah. probably like Shockless or Shekless. Yeah, yeah, but it's got like a Z. Or is, a C, how about Sean Ross, S. S? What's wrong Sean with S. first name last initial? Sean, I Sec- just want to say that what Sean did here was I just want to call him out on this because if everybody did what Sean did. And and Josh is just sitting on his hands. But I just want to finish this, and we'll get to Josh. If everybody did what Sean did, we would never have to talk about anything else from anybody. Sean doubled his sponsorship. Doubled it. Why, if everybody did that. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Sean. Mm-hmm. I forgot what I was going to say before that. So Very much. Anyway, yeah. Might not it, must, it must not have been. Unbelievable. No, you can bring it up later. Well, Thank but you, you know, very much, Sean. It's 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 time Appreciate for Josh anyway. Yes, thank you, Sean, and Josh. It's me. Your time. It's your time to shine. Did you, you know find what? the cheeseburger? Uh, what? <laughs> did you find the plain old cheeseburger? I finally, I finally did. I mean, it, it, uh, uh, it's been years in the making. I mean, they've had specials, and I've always done like you know when they didn't have specials, I liked. I did hay fires, and then I did poppers, and. You know, finally, it just, it's like, you know, I've never actually had a regular cheeseburger from them. Just two patties, some cheese, lettuce, tomatoes, pickles, onions, and a little bit of chipotle ketchup just to give it a little, little, little freshness. And it delivered. It was, it was a solid, solid cheeseburger. You know, pretty thick cut pickles. The fries were fantastic today. They were perfectly done for me. The tomatoes weren't great. The lettuce had been sitting there for a little while. And so, you know, it, it wasn't this crisp. But, I mean, that's what happens when you wrap it up in, a, you know, in, in that foil. And you have to take it to places like, you know, work. Why do I have to work for a living? But, you know, it was it was a good solid cheeseburger it didn't make me feel sick or anything it was filling it was tasty it was crisp yeah, the onions were popping the, the pickles were 
just what you would expect and, and the, the chipotle ketchup just set it all off and and, and mixed in with the, the beef flavor and two slices of cheese it was a it was a nicely done classic cheeseburger well you work so that you don't have to be wimpy and walk in there and say i'd gladly pay you tomorrow for a cheeseburger today yeah, but the thing, if I if I went in there on Wednesday and I said, you know, glad you play it Tuesday. I mean, I've I've got I've got a lot of days it's of, true. of deferred interest on that burger, and so it's it's it might be worth it. Intel yeah. has launched their 11th gen Tiger Lake H mobile processors. We talked about a little bit of rumor last week, but now it's all official. It's all out on the table. And we just can't get enough of it. I mean, it's we're going to have a barrage of new laptop SKUs, as, as I wrote here. And Tiger Lake H, it's all 10 nanometer super thin. So unlike last time where we had 10th gen stuff that was both 10 nanometer on the low power end and 14 nanometer at the high performance end, now it's all 10 nanometer. And they're getting the clocks out of it up to 5 gigahertz. We have the flagship i9-11980HK, which replaces the i9-10980HK, but the clocks are slightly lower this time. Max clocks are only 5 gigahertz on two cores. Previous gen flagship only hit 5.1. Only 5 gigahertz. And that's with Turbo Boost Max 3.0 technology. What's interesting is, if you look at this graphic here, the, I, I guess... This is kind of typical for them. I didn't realize that the 10980HK was actually a 65-watt configurable part. I thought it was 45. So this being 65 is no big deal, but it is 3.3 gigahertz at 65 watts as configured. I am guessing that's all core, but I don't know. 2.6 at 45 watts. It does need more power to boost up to 5 gigahertz, two cores. It... The, I want to see the PL1 and PL2 on these things, but I think PL2 is like 200 watts. But well, I don't think it, it boosts this for is, very this long. This is mobile? Yeah, it's mobile. It's mobile. You know, mm-hmm. a 65-watt CPU that has very high power limits of well over 100 to approaching even 200 watts. And they're specifically targeting larger, more powerful form factors with this, I'm sure. They would have to. Uh because I think cooling this is going to be interesting. So, anyway, there's other watt hour batteries on laptops coming up. No, it's 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 not going to be that bad. Look, Just because they they've 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 configured it at the very lowest level to still be really power efficient through most workloads, and I mean, there's just. It's not like back in the day where you just boost everything up to, you know, some strange number. And then when your bio starts reporting temperatures going up, it cranks it down a little bit. It's, it's you know, there's it's a lot of logic in there that uh, controls power and clock and detection of, you know, things heating up and, and when stuff gets, you know, inefficient. Uh, because you know the hotter it goes, the more power it draws, and uh, you know they they got to put a stop to that. Can't let the kids go wild. Oh, they can, can't. Josh. Can't. Josh. Well, I mean, this can. is the no, first it's... unlockable right out of the gate, or unlocked. It's fully unlocked. This is overclockable. That the eleven nine eighty HK sixty five watts is just the very beginning because you can overclock yeah. this thing. You can push those power limits. Yeah, but super fin. I mean, I I will be very curious to see the availability of these and the actual prices that comes out. Because super fan is is not inexpensive to implement and you're also dealing with a 10 nanometer process at the base that was not terribly economical for Intel. And so I I'm very curious what what uh my cat's meowing at me. She's actually dreaming, and and yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah, it, it's going to be interesting to see the availability. I mean, Intel is still a large manufacturer, and uh, if if anybody has more clean space than them, it's it's very few people in this world. So, um, yeah, it's uh, you know I, I know that I am 
wandering and waving around and I'm not totally like smashed or anything, but there's a lot of factors here to kind of consider. Hey, and consider uh, yeah, it's been too. launched. What's that? Here's the platform slide. So talk about this too. Ooh. Like some of the stuff that they're look, they, they have the gen four crown now. Cause you know, AMD uh-huh. maybe have it on desktop and had it first, but <laughs> Intel's like, Hey, we they're have first 20 the- gen four lanes off the CPU ultimate enthusiast configurations oh, only with their 24 gen 3 lanes you have to add them together well plus 24 i mean you've got 44 yes. lanes 20 off the cpu that's actually very good yeah but Although, i think the gen 3 lanes are co- a lot of those are coming off of the uh chipset but i don't yeah. know yeah i could be wrong no they are yeah they are. probably no yeah okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But, hey, but for a know. mobile that's that's kind of bizarre Bootable RAID 0 off the CPU. Think about it. You have enough lanes there. Eight but lanes Ryan the works at Intel. RAID 0. He's like, you gotta put you gotta put Death Wish RAID on this thing. I, I don't know. Anything that's been near him that's raided is is going to die. Well, SSDs let's, let's, die a lot faster than they used to. He like let's gave talk about Paul that. Hardware a call the other day and, and Paul's RAID died on his main production machine oh, yeah. so just uh, if you see ryan shroud is calling just ignore his other one just yeah exactly don't even pick up the phone yeah. did you see their gen over gen performance forget their comparisons against amd stuff which we also have here but they're saying five to even up to 21 percent faster in certain situations with certain systems and certain configurations and so we're from 14 to 10 and improved Willow Cove core architecture. This is their comparison, again, the Intel in-house benchmarks, but the i9-11980HK versus a Ryzen 9 5900HX. And shows the Intel on top in every uh, game that they've selected oh, here. But Wait, then, wait, before you move on there, I just want to point out that they are actually comparing the RTX, what is it? This is the 3060 versus, I, I'm trying to read it as it goes by, or it's a 3080. So it's the 3080 versus the 3080. As we talked about last week, not all 3080s are. They they gave compared. AMD the better 3080 according to this. Oh, I see that the 165. The 165 watt versus they were using the one with 155. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and then if we look, I at know the, that's something somebody was going to mention. So, I said in here, uh, why Intel is comparing a Core i5 product to an AMD Ryzen 9 lower powered HS variant or otherwise is unknown. But here it is anyway, the Core i5 11400H versus a Ryzen 9 5900HS. That's the 35-watt variant of the 5900. And uh, they only trade blows. It still loses sometimes. Who dug up War Thunder? <laughs> it looked good on a chart. <laughs> you do well, you didn't, do. though. It's the funnier oh, thing. Okay. Well, it looked better <laughs> well. than some of the other ones, maybe? The, the, you know they're they're trying to be balanced and they're trying fair to say hey we've got a competitive part in some things it's more than competitive but you can see here that you know we're we're being honest with it and saying that in some things we lose but when we lose it's not much but when we win we win big why why am I not in marketing I know you have oh it's because I'm stupid. You should- you should write down these pearls of wisdom. Josh, you know why they can't get the batteries? It's not technical. Why the batteries can't be larger in the laptops? You, you probably know why. It's because they We're can't talking. get enough children in Argentina to mine the lithium? That's only one of the reasons. The other reason is because the... The old musky can't stealing bring, it all? No. That's only half a reason. The real reason is, is because of limitations on airport uh, or airplane travel and the size of the wattage per hour size of the battery limitation from the FAA. Mm-hmm. So when you get laptops out. that boost up to 125 watts and you can't get a battery in the laptop to actually service a, a well, power draw it like it that, it's, it's not, being, you know, yeah, I, you I can understand in. that when a battery decides to consume itself at 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, they may have a point. That's, that's 25,000 feet. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. problem. It, it's, it's an issue as the battery melts <laughs> through the floor. 
and sets the aluminum on fire. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That could be a problem. They were sitting in a place where there was plenty of magnesium parts uh, exposed in the airframe. And mm-hmm. yeah, no, that's. that's hey, by the way, Why speaking, air of my, speaking of Intel, and this is not on the mobile side, but this was on our list. But Intel Alder Lake S, supposed to be coming in November, and it'll be first to market with Gen 5 PCI Express. Are you excited? And, oh, and the first to DDR5 RAM. DDR5? And, and new coolers, because it's not compatible with the old ones. And a new right, socket. Because a new new chip or new chip socket. Yeah. Is it finally going to be so big that it just cannot <laughs> use the old uh, the whole yeah, layout that's, motherboard? That's what I've out. heard. I have heard that. Uh, that they have to change the holes. It, okay. It's what fifteen hundred pins. Something like that. Seventeen hundred. Seventeen hundred. It's more ridiculous than that. It's not as bad. You know, what, you enthusiast. Remember, remember like ten years ago, that was that was like high end Xeon stuff with that many yep. pins and now it's eh, it's consumer and here i thought that you know amd with 1337 you know leet pins were yeah it's not 1337 no actually i think it's like 1331 or something. i can't remember anyway it's close but it's not quite and the ram is coming i see this tweak town headline kingston prepping ddr5 with oc support for q3 which would coincide this with year that launch but I, look I up here it's pretty soon get, direct your gaze to the hot stories which uh lead <laughs> off with chia coin mining yeah. fantastic and so the and reason you can't buy the following card. yeah yeah you can't buy a gpu but you also can't buy storage for any pretty soon. near retail so the yeah. the story is is that they're they're about to come out with DDR5 later in the year that's with uh, overclocking yeah. capabilities and you can't and the motherboard manufacturers are in qualification right now and they need to make a decision as to whether to support DDR4 or DDR5 and they cannot support both at the same time on the same and board. Samsung's bragging about sense. Uh, CXL anytime now too DDR5 that uh, supports compute a compute express link. AKA terabytes of local RAM pools. Oh, CXL, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's neat stuff. But going yeah. back to the dual um, memory thing. Yeah. Uh, Via had a DDR. No, it was it was an SDR and a DDR. A7A266, baby. You're, board. you're molested by that board were you not i was i was indeed molested by that board because i had the bright idea of all this ddr new fangled stuff might not work so i can fall back to the sd kids don't go with dual memory controllers it's a bad idea bad yeah Yeah. but anyway it's uh you know it, it it going back to this it's pretty fascinating that intel is jumping onto these new things right away i mean it's it's like a switch was flipped three years ago they're like all right we're we're in trouble we're we are looking behind the ball we talk to our foundry partners and you know they do have foundry partners they don't just produce their own stuff i mean they've got network chips and hundreds of other products and they know what's coming down the line and they've talked to their motherboard partners and they know the chipsets and CPUs that are coming the way that are getting validated. And they're like, this is no good. You know, we, we blew it on PCI 4.0. I mean, PCI 4.0 for Intel just came out, but they're, they're making up for it. So yeah, we're going to have 5.0. However, I haven't heard anything from any of the other GPU SSD manufacturers that, are doing anything with PCA 5.0. I mean, at least with, you know, with when AMD had announced theirs back with the 3000 series. Let me make sure. Yeah, the 3000 series that, you know, they had, they'd gotten some SSD. They'd gotten one SSD partner on board, Fizon, to do a PCI 4.0 controller. And both NVIDIA and, of course, the AMD graphics people, they were working pretty hard to to get that going. And so, you know, RTX 3000 series, which launched before the AMD 5000 series, supported 4.0. So as long as you had a, you know, 570 board, you know, you could, you could access that. But I haven't heard anything yet about PCI 5.0 peripherals. I mean, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be coming down the lane because it is an industry standard. 
But, you know, AMD worked hard to try to get at least a couple partners on board in reasonable amount of time. And you can get plenty of stuff by the beginning of this year. Maybe not GPUs, but anyway, they were available. But, you know, we had uh, Western Digital. Um, Samsung finally got on board. Fizon had two generations. Uh, SMI came on with um, PCI 4.0. Um, and, yeah, those are the main things that you really need. I mean, network cards... 10G, I think, is is still supported perfectly fine on PCI 3.0. Um, you know, I'd have to look at the throughput numbers, but that's that's seemingly. I mean, at the two wide and yeah. four wide, you're you're more than adequately covered with uh, with that. So interesting. Obviously, what four will do you need are are NVMe SSDs that are barely faster than Gen 4. Just to prove they can take advantage. Like we're gonna see Gen four yeah. Gen five SSDs at CES twenty twenty two that are eight thousand megabytes per second. Yeah. Uh, at Still a Q depth of one thousand and twenty four. Yeah. 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 At, at, with thirty two <laughs> threads fully saturating every channel yeah. of the controller. Yeah, I, I think that I think the NAND is still a little bit more of the issue there. And uh designing more than an eight channel controller is yeah, um, economical for them. I don't know, and pointless at this point as well. Really, yeah. You just need one channel of the densest QLC imaginable, <laughs> <laughs> which goes at still mm-hmm. four hundred megabytes per second. Yeah, it's it's like yeah. going back in time to so SATA three it is. SSDs. Mm-hmm. Except what a good time! Hey, I remember when I enjoyed them. Yeah. Yeah. That was fast enough. The most glorious experience of my PC building career was putting my first SSD in a Windows XP system and watching how fast it booted up. I'm like, this is amazing. It never get, it'll never get any better than this. And it hasn't. It's true. Windows 8 and then 10, everything just feels so slow. Yeah, it's slowed down. Yeah. You'll never feel that leap like that, probably, again. So. True. I need a next-gen experience. I need a next-gen PC experience right now. Hmm. I don't know, because uh, I, I, I think you should put that Mac crack, back. because <laughs> my first really fast NVMe drive, when I did a fresh install of, of Windows 10, it's like you push the button, you see the BIOS screen, you see that kind of circle thing for about two and a half seconds, and then, and then you're, you're up. It's and then, like, yeah. and then that's, you're that's pretty impressive. I mean, even that and fast then. SSD back in the day was, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. So I don't know. Yeah. We'll call bullshit. And then I reimage one of the Dells from work and I'm like, you still alive, bud? You, you still going to come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. Look, oh, it's fast. Oh, there it is. There it is. Until it won't even boot because of a forced update the night before. And then you're sitting there yeah. and it's at 90% for yeah. like 45 minutes and you don't know what the hell is going on. But that's another story. Hey, uh, let's see. Oh, let's forget about this x86 stuff and PCs as we know it. Let's talk about IBM. Everybody's oh, favorite let's. chip architecture. It's two nanometer. But yeah, for they, reals. they claim they've created the smallest processor ever four times the battery life better efficiency better performance perhaps yeah see whose fingernail are they talking about look at this wafer andre the giants and not to mention which fingernail which yes which finger yeah so it's you know there's a lot of little stuff in here no pun intended (laughs) <laughs> but it's it's you know it is a technology presentation that you know this this wafer if you were to actually you know buy one it would be millions and millions of dollars and it really has useless chips on it because it's a technical demonstration and you know it works for the testing that they do but it's not an actual product and so what they do is is you know they get all the information they can out of it they they see what works what doesn't you know, the type of defect rates. Um, They try different uh, technologies on each because apparently it it has a gate all around GAA uh, transistors in there, but it's only in in certain small spots that, you know, they can do test dyes. And so it's not the whole full-blown wafer. 
So this is, you know, really just, it, it's a science experiment and they're learning from it. And yeah, they've, they've gotten things pretty small, but we don't know exactly how small, I mean, they've, they've thrown out a few numbers, but, but, uh, you know, IBM kind of, they got out of the foundry game and it's interesting that they're still researching this stuff and it will be even more interesting if they start licensing out to TSMC and Samsung and Intel and, and anybody else, Global Foundries. Uh, Global Foundries has a very close relationship to IBM. So, you know, eventually this technology will percolate throughout the industry, even though IBM really isn't doing much. But, I mean, the, the amount of science that IBM does just because is is really fascinating. And, and kind of their, their business model is, I mean, it's – that company is is really really odd since they got rid of all of their retail products in laptops servers pcs everything um it's very esoteric almost what they do but they still make money i mean it's 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 really bizarre somebody should do a deep dive in ibm someday because ibm is it's a weird spooky character behind the scenes that everybody still kind of relies upon. They're, uh, they're really bizarre. But um, <clears throat> in this case, we do see that manufacturing has ability to go smaller and smaller still, even without going to really, really extreme measures in terms of materials and uh, foundry machinery. I mean, they're, they're doing probably this stuff with, with uh, EUV, obviously, um, you know, one, UV machine consumes the power of a very, very small city. Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's really interesting. Again, Wait, esoteric stuff. No, how they almost, make almost. Oh, no. Almost. Nine. no. By the way, so, I mean, I, this, go, go ahead. ahead. No, you no go their, on. their architecture, uh, the, how they're laying this out is just, is 3d and it's hard to pin down exactly where are they taking this to, nanometer measurement from they've also said that it's several years away even though they've as you said demonstrated yeah. this is really a sort of a science experiment but they're years away from any commercialization of this approach to two nanometer right do you gates. think that the the real problem here is that this is not an apple product like if apple was talking about their m2 at two nanometer and that's what the two stands for yeah I mean, this basically that... would have been a steve jobs one more thing and it would have been available in the store today more importantly, I was looking at this picture. Striped or corduroy? What do you think? Is that a stripe? A uh, stripe. Or is stripe. it a corduroy shirt? Uh, there, uh, oh, I see what you're saying. See, because up know. here, it, it almost looks a little bit textured around the collar but area. Look at that sleeve. I, I look at the it, sleeve. I think it is corduroy. I don't, see, it could go either way. This could be the next thing that sweeps the internet, like striped or corduroy. You know, it's like mm. the, it could the, be the dress. gold thing. Mm -hmm. Jat, what do you think? Uh, we should move on from this story, though. Yeah, two we've nanometers. Been doing this for what is it? More than half an hour, and we've gotten through basically two stories. Two, two stories. Two stories. Yeah. What about the other ones? Are supposed to be like. Hey, let's just shoot through this. Wi-Fi. Wi -Fi, more man. secure. Frag attacks. Jeremy. Yep, and we're not talking about the nice uh, Unreal Frag Monkey attack. No, this is something that apparently has affected essentially every bloody thing that's got Wi-Fi on it of from the original like WAP straight through to WPA3. Uh, it's an architectural issue with how it either aggregates a bunch of small frames into one large one and doesn't actually verify that that aggregation okay addition to the the the, the frame is actually encrypted and authenticated or where it won't uh, pay attention to how it is taking them apart again. And you, so you can manage to sneak something in there and thusly sort of get the encryption key for the entire set. The good news is that it's been patched or at least the patches are available on windows, Linux, everything. The problem is your ISP probably hasn't bothered to push out any firmware updates for your, uh, the device you've got sitting at home, so you might want to, you know, see if they've got a new version that you can uh, swap your old router for and, you know, get rid of the old modem. So, 
they fixed this between seven months to a couple of years ago, and for the most part, didn't really tell anything. Uh, there was an update to the, one of the Linux kernels that actually stated it, but Windows did it very quietly. Intel didn't even say a damn thing. They just pushed out a firmware update. So it is patchable. And the other wonderful thing about it is that as terrifying it is that, yes, literally everything on the planet would have been vulnerable to it. It is actually ridiculously hard to implement, to, to actually do these sort of attacks. You've already pretty much got to have a huge amount of control over somebody's systems. Although considering the number of hard coded passwords and Wi-Fi routers and the amount of people that change those passwords or not, not change them. <laughs> yeah. Not uh, theoretically impossible, but regardless, this is hey, a, it's there. This is a data padding attack because the way the encryption algorithm works is it has to work in padded out data blocks mm -hmm. and they can't be like of, of an unequal length. And if you insert some known data into the pad space, and you can begin to understand what the keys were because you have a part of the payload which is known. So you can begin yeah. over a period of time, you can begin to extract what the encryption keys are if you if you have a large enough data sample. So layman's terms. Which, a, yeah, <laughs> which for a lot of people doesn't take very long at all. No. Added data hey, did packages. you know? Did you know that AMD actually has a Wi-Fi 6E chip? Really? No, they I don't. I did not. They just apparently released it. Mm. No. So it's it's so Intel no longer has the monopoly on Wi-Fi six. Who is making it? It's, yeah. it's a rebranded MediaTek. Okay. It probably so is. They don't make their but own. Who cares? It is. It is. That. Yeah. But it, <laughs> I mean, they do if they use the CPU. Yeah, but they, they, they package it in with chipsets and processors. That's true. So no, that's is it true. a free component? No, it's close enough. The, all right, we're not going to argue about this. Uh, premium we're not. store we're move brand. On. Hey, Brett, you love to talk yes. about Micro Center. This is actually a oh. Micro Center brand, right? Do I ever? Apparently, I've never heard Isn't of it before. that nice photo? Can I just say, this is a beautiful photo. Whoever thought that taking a picture of an SSD on a motherboard could look this good? The label but looks yeah, so look, crisp. it just pops. It pops as compared this, to everything this, else. Yeah, the bokeh. It's the blue. Yeah, I wonder if it's been photoshopped. Yeah. It might have been photoshopped Think about it for a second. Well, That's well, like it's an edge select here. That's look cheating. At the ice That's a bokeh of up, like six, up, six up, millimeters. Up. Look That's at how crisp works. the PCI slot is right below, and then how fuzzy it gets. Yeah, this was yeah. That's crap. This was all right. Anyway, so I'm not as. Bad. However, Maury would be very happy because look at that CMOS battery. That's pretty easy. I don't know what is this. Um, I don't know. What, I'm is assuming this a, like, like a, a single down? slot GPU or something. No, look here? at the wire coming off the left. What's that? It looks what like a that? GPU fan, or maybe a, a 10 <sighs> active uh, chipset fan. So that's uh, that does weird. slightly impede the CMOS battery removal, I think. It would you could do it. You could kind of reach your thumb in here and like you have to flick this thing and. I don't okay, know. moving on. Yeah, let's move on. Stop it. So yeah, yeah. premium. All right. It's premium. It's a premium SSD. How well is it Chia mine? Look at those nice empty pads on the back. The two terabyte More storage would theoretically have some. Is this space for another DRAM chip? What is this? Did this get a blank? Yeah, it would be SSD. So yeah, it's uh, what is this? This website from 1999. Uh, Look at those raised buttons on the uh, left-hand side of that website. Yeah, no, this is, is 3D, very 3D buttons. Good. This is yeah. apparently what their website looks like right now. Right now. Nice. All right, we need to go. If I could turn back time, 2021. If I could find some way, there's a link up above. Premium, right, right up above. Don't tell them. Make them wander around. We there it is right there. <laughs> just oh lord, that's true. Isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Isn't yeah. it beautiful? This is great. That's, it's glorious. Look that at is CD like when I corner. bought. I, I bought one of my first graphics cards off of a site much like this, and that was the. Orchid Righteous 3D Voodoo. And it just, yeah, that's 80 gig guys, ATA 133 hard drive. Wait, 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 go back. Is that the 100 go to video or the cards. 133? Well, go to video cards. Can you get it, see Josh? what's available. <laughs> Before oh, I think wow. this might this be an 20, old website. This is 20 years out of date. Wow. Oh, but look at the AGB. copyright. Look at the copyright. 2021. Look at the copyright. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
I'll bet this was the last place you could find an active blink tag on the internet. I think... Well, it's the only place you can buy GBUs, so... Mm. True! Yeah, Yeah, if they're in stock. This is where we find out that AGP is actually a better bus for mining. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we should figure out a way to convert back to AGP. And and you could raise that uh, aperture. Maybe that's the key. You could. Could be. I remember setting that manually and and then resetting it manually because that one didn't it didn't work, work. it didn't work <laughs> and, then <that> one. <laughs> and then trying it again and like oh i didn't need to do that anyway who cares <laughs> real quick before we take a break here extreme tech has a news post up about we've, we've heard about this this is the whispers that are out there ssd prices are headed up and you'd think amid crypto demand why and we've been we've alluded to it a couple times the chia nonsense well, it's also a shortage of flash too, but well, yeah. yeah. But I mean, if people or well, thrashing... flash manufacturers realizing they can charge whatever they feel. Well, like. yeah, it's like they're getting in on it too. <laughs> Wait, well, the GPU manufacturers is not fair. And then they they created Chia. It's a hoax. It was created by you know one of these storage companies probably. Eh, oh, this I is like... Fison saying this actually. No, oh, maybe they created Chia. It's a conspiracy. Oh, maybe. I have no. I have nothing to back this up. They're in control of it. Could be. That would suck. No. Uh, one of our sponsors tonight is LinkedIn Talent Solutions. Uh, find your next hire faster. Are you growing your business? As you already know, it takes way more to be successful than offering a popular product or service. It's a lot about the people. It's essential to have the right people in the right place to ensure your company operates smoothly and has the potential to expand. LinkedIn Jobs can help you find the best candidates now for free. I spent some time exploring the job section earlier, and I found the abilities to search and filter by job type, location, and skills really super easy to use. The best candidates will definitely be able to find your offer. So get started today by posting your job for free, and you'll be reaching out to LinkedIn's network of over 740 million professionals. Complete a job application form by filling out targeted screening questions, which will get your role in front of the most qualified candidates with the right experience, skill set, and motivations that you'll need. Your jobs panel has the tools and filters to prioritize top candidates for further interviews. LinkedIn Jobs will help you hire the right person for your role. And your first job post is now free. Just visit linkedin.com slash pcper. Again, that's linkedin.com slash pcper to post your first job for free. Terms and conditions apply. We're back. And we're going to talk about more depressing news on the security front. This is sad. Now, I wish we could just talk about the fact that phones have breakable screens, which is what this image seems to indicate. Look at that spider web of broken glass. But really, it's a newly detected Qualcomm vulnerability affecting almost one in three phones. Jeremy, could this could this be true? You also can't take Jeremy's pictures at face value. You I know. know he he likes to have fun. <laughs> he likes to have fun. I mean, you, you look up broken cell phone and... There's some really crap stuff that comes up. Let's just say that. I, I was hoping for something more interesting. So, yeah, this one is actually kind of depressing. It's it's a freaking uh, heap overflow attack on the Qualcomm mobile station modem, which you've probably never heard of. But what is on your phone that handles uh, voice calls, SMS, uh, whether this how it interfaces with the SIM. Uh, even to the point of recording stuff uh, in the, the newer high def, super slow motion, it takes 57 pictures at the same time as a video. And the, the, the most wonderful part about it is that if it actually managed to get on the phone, because it sits on the actual Qualcomm modem firmware, you, you can't find it, let alone remove it. So you install an app which has it and, well, you know, much like syphilis or herpes, you're, you, it's just the gift that keeps giving for you. So, yeah, the best part is that we don't, it's not even clear what models, like you can't say, okay, it is this type of Qualcomm chip or it is this model of phone or this level of OS. It, it's, it's there. It can probably affect you. We're not quite sure because it's not just the one ship that gets it. It's a couple of other ones. And so you've got a bunch of people from Checkpoint and a couple of other, you know, professional white hats that are trying to figure it out as to what is going on. 
but as it stands right now, just about anything running Android, uh, like up to including like Xiaomi and LG, it's probably a thing. So kids, don't download random apps. Make sure that, you know, it's from a qualified vendor and uh, that, you know, a lot of people have downloaded it and there isn't a whole bunch of security white papers written about how horrible it is. Because otherwise, you're going to get something you can't even get rid of at this point. And it gets fun because, I mean, now it's got your voice, your SMS. It uh, can literally can take control of the SIM and unlock it without you knowing it. So now you might not even be on the same provider that you thought you were. You're on the evil cell tower that somebody built over that way for about 50 bucks. And it's now just going through everything you do. So yeah, I wish there was a good part to end this on, but at this point, yeah, we're still looking for it. Yeah, we'll just ignore it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. That's, <laughs> that's my away. solution. Yeah. yeah, it's fine. Yeah. You know what else is going away? <clears throat> Let's have a moment of silence for Windows 10X. No. Originally no. going to be the dual screen. Not even a moment. Thing, and then they were <laughs> like, no, we could do single screen because that's what OEMs want. And we'll, we'll make this a Chromebook competitor OS. And, and you know, this thing happened last year and people started using... Just traditional laptops, you know, and buying all of them. And the kids were going to school from home and parents were working from home. And now it's like, yeah, we don't need Windows 10X. We're going to, uh, let's see, what is it? The actual uh, statement. Turns here. out laptops are portable enough. Huh. Yeah, I guess they don't have an official statement. Brad Sams over at uh, Petri.com mm. also writes for Throughout.com, of course. According to people familiar with the company's plans, Microsoft will not be shipping Windows 10X this year, and the OS as you know it today will likely never arrive. The company has shifted resources to Windows 10, and 10X is on the back burner for now. Yeah, which is you know they're not giving it up. Today. They never give anything up. Never. It's it all still might there. Just Windows come back. Phone still exists. It does in some it dark does. room. Mm. No longer it's compatible with Office 359, but still re- exists. Do you want to talk about uh, bar, resizable bar, benchmarks? I want to talk about a bar, but not necessarily a resizable bar. Let's just resizable here's ones. All, here's all you need to know. Here is a picture of a whole bunch of GPUs that you can't have. Aww, I have tried to avoid images like this. This just feels uh, it's it was horrible, tacky, and I put extreme. it up. What is it? What is resizable bar? You can get slightly better performance out of the GPU that you're lucky enough to own or Sometimes. can't buy. One yeah. or the other. And the right for the most part, if you aren't on an Intel motherboard. Well, Intel is catching some. up. There yeah. are some, but you go and you pick up a current Ryzen board and it it supports it. You, you, well, sorry, you might have to flash the BIOS, but it supports it just fine. The Intel is slowly catching up and just like Nvidia caught up, which was the whole point of this is that Nvidia's finally, you know, added in smart access memory. Oh no, sorry, resize old bar, uh, to support as well as AMD. And long story short is that, yeah, they both work to a small extent. Uh, neither yeah. one is particularly better than the other, but it doesn't hurt except in a couple of different games. Yeah, I mean, look at cyber. Obviously, everybody's playing Cyberpunk. It's it was a huge smash hit. Full HD Cyberpunk oh, yeah. performance with a 3090. You go from 115 to 121 FPS. I'm that's, playing it now. That's six frames per second with a 2090. Yeah, okay. Here, here's Sorry, the, here's the thing about resizable bar, and that a lot of people don't look at. <clears throat> it's 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 the minimum goes up dramatically. Mm. Not yes. the the average. Yeah, average does not. Mm-hmm. I mean, the averages go up a little, but not a huge amount. But when you start looking at minimum, and that you know ninety nine percent, which can you know really give you burps and hiccups and whatnot, it's uh, it's significantly better. So it's you know in my opinion, it is an advance. It's not a game changer. But it is something to improve overall experience that has existed in the PCIe spec for ages. And now they're only just starting to support it in software. And it's and it's a net positive because 
Yeah, it, it improves the low end performance pretty dramatically, even though yes. you only see an average of, you know, five or six frames, which is still pretty decent with one feature. But when you actually start playing it, it's like the experience is it's just it's 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 smoother. I mean, it's it's hard to explain it other than that. It's it's not going to be night and day, but you're not going to notice hitches or little kind of annoying things because they do improve the that are lower deep. performance. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, I know. Speaking from experience, I've been fiddling with it too. And yeah, no, there's there's a definite, there's times where in certain games it's like, yeah, a big look across a long vista is going to judder a little bit. And now it actually doesn't quite so much. It's nice. When it first came out and I had a, a beta BIOS, that was able to enable that and a uh, 6800 with a uh, resizable bar, which the course of what the, what's the, what's the AMD's thing, Sam, I noticed very little difference in quite a few games, but it was like red dead redemption, which is a pretty data intensive game. It, it jumped up 20% at the bottom. Easy. I mean, the average was again, higher, but not hugely higher, but that bottom part was just, I mean, it was it was measurable. It was there, and and you know when you wandered around, it was like, this is really nice. This is kind of seamless. And then you you know turn it off and you do it again. And it's like, oh, there's a hitch here and there. There's you know something kind of strange. It just doesn't it just doesn't feel quite as is is nice. But yeah, it's uh, it's there. I mean, it it it's it's measurable. But moving along. Yeah. We looked at a Silverstone case. The Sugo, it's an aluminum clad. And by that, I mean the outside panels are all aluminum and the inside is a uh, steel chassis. It's an aluminum clad mini ITX cube-like enclosure. Think of it more like a large shoebox. It's not because it's, it's long, but cube-like from the front. If you're, if so you're listening and not watching... Box. Yeah, it's like a bread box. It's exactly like a bread box. Jeremy, you're absolutely right. And uh, let me go to the specs here. Because uh, in, in the comments, people are like, how big is it? You write a review and don't even tell me how big it is. It's right in the specs. Don't worry. Calm down. I have it yeah, here I in, that. in millimeters <laughs> and inches, no less. This yeah. is a 19 liter case. So this is big for mini ITX. Nine and a, uh, 9.75 inches wide. Or 9.72. 8.31 inches high. So it's a little bit, it's kind of that 4 3 aspect ratio, maybe 5 4 on the front. And it's 14.41 inches deep. These are bigger dimensions than previous iterations of the SGE series cases from Silverstone. So they've made it a little bit larger, but in so doing, it supports three slot, full length GPUs. And by full length, they mean like full length. It's longer than I think just about any currently available graphics card. There's a lot of space back there. It's compatible with Mini DTX, of course, because it has that third slot. So if you have a slightly longer than ITX board or a triple slot GPU, no problem. And you can put, you can cram some radiators in this thing. You can, uh, you can have a couple of radiators in at a time. We'll talk about that here in a moment, but it has USB type C up front. Uh, it's, 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 but it's, it's a minimal kind of design. If you're looking at the pictures, and here it is with the lighting turned down a little bit. It almost looks like space gray. I had the silver color in for review. They also offer it in black. This is a little bit more of a metallic finish. They don't do that brushed kind of Lian Lee finish. This is more kind of a speckly, like sandblasted metallic. Yeah, but very very ventilated case. Everywhere you look, there's a vent except for the bottom panel, which is solid. So top, both sides, solid. Are, are ventilated, fully ventilated panels with screen filters. And then, of course, in the rear, you have a 120 uh, millimeter bracket. You can see those triple triple expansion slots. So this uses a standard ATX power supply. You can see the outlet for it here. It has one of those um, extension cables when you actually mount the PSU. And this comes with your choice of two different heights of rubber foot, and they let you stick them on because there is no defined orientation of this thing. You can put it in any direction you want. I recommend the taller feet if you're putting a vented side as the bottom. Just to give you a little bit more airflow. But you can see 
like what the side panels look like. There's three like this, and then this bottom one. I don't know why I don't have all four in this photo, but and then the thumb screws are nice too because they're captive screws, but they're like spring-loaded captive screws. It's a, a little bit more premium feeling. And you can get a, a quick look at the inside here. Here's from the top down or the side, depending on how you have it oriented. You, this is where you put your ATX power supply. This is a removable top or side fan bracket. And then on the other side, you have this 240 slash 280 millimeter bracket. 280s would be a little bit of a tight fit, but you can do it. And behind that, you have just your basic innards of the case. There's a look at it with the uh, first side panel removed. But um, building in this thing, they, they show five different configurations on their site. So if you take the front panel off, which comes off with two screws and, and pops off, there's two SSD mounts up there below the uh, case I.O. And then you have the ability to mount hard drives on the side bracket that can also hold a 240 or a 120 millimeter radiator. And then there's this clever little, uh, you know, spot for an SSD right above the motherboard. So you can put quite a bit of storage in here. This is like the max storage config. It's like air cooler, two hard drives on the side, three SSDs, plus whatever NVMe storage you have. So quite a bit of storage in here. You can put AIOs. I Technically, I have a picture that shows the clearance issue, but I don't think you could do this. I think it's either or. You can't do a 120 on the CPU and say you had one of those GPUs with a 240 millimeter radiator. I think you'd have to orient it differently if the hoses were down at the other end. You'd have more space. And by the way, if you're watching the video, you can see this this gap here. There's a, a hole. An That's for the floppy drive, or the, for the CD drive, right? Yeah. In the other model, the SG14 has an outer five and a quarter inch bay. Oh, yeah! So if you don't need <laughs> the all-aluminum premium SG15, you can get the SG14, which is internally the same, but has a, you know, more of a Spartan exterior and has an external five and a quarter inch bay. So, and here's that clearance thing. If you, this is just with the stock exhaust fan. If you put, uh, this is a 280 millimeter cooler, but if you put one in there, I couldn't quite get it all the way in because the hoses were bumping. You had to flip it around the other way. So orientation matters. It's, 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 there's a lot of space in here, but you do run into a little bit of clearance issues here and there, depending on how you configure it. But you can configure this in so many different ways. Again, they show five different configurations. There, are, there are more. But the big thing about this, though, huge. Do, air do they do they send uh, it with uh, silicon-based lube to get it all together? No, but they did send this nice hundred and four. <laughs> look at this. This is a hundred and forty <laughs> millimeter deep, <clears throat> forty millimeter deep power supply. Just That's slip a that right in. Thousand watts. Well, yeah. a thousand. And then they and have an, their. And I've bought these platinum. short cables before. They're great. These short cable yep. kits from Silverstone. If you have a Silverstone power supply on a mini ITX case, you gotta get these. Are like 20, 25 bucks. And they're they're those like thin, flexible ribbon cables. And look at all the space. Here, here it is. With, I just threw in this little mini ITX test system I've been using. It has a stock cooler. I know it, it's a, a Ryzen five thirty six hundred X. And there's look still at all space this room. for a loaf of bread. Yeah, look at all this room for activities. You can put in a little GPU. You can put in a big GPU. And there's still room around the corner here yeah. for a taller GPU and even a longer GPU. And this is a do, long... Do you get a five and a quarter I mean, installed? No. Do you no, have a picture? No, because, Come on! Because... This He's a heretic, on, Josh. He doesn't even own one. It's oh, He owns on. Ancient <laughs> Max. He doesn't have an I, optical drive. I have <laughs> stacks of optical drives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Sata. They're they're located in Canada right now, but he's got stacks. You've got to believe him. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Anyway, there's more pictures. You can look at the review. You can't use really tall RAM and a two like a two eighty millimeter. There's just little things like that. Like you've got to kind of plan out your build. Use low profile or lower profile memory for maximum compatibility with certain things. That's ah, just that's just ITX case life. Yeah, you gotta be but like, I yeah. will say for a case this big, that's mini ITX. There was precious little room for a power supply. That's, I mean, they, they sent along that really compact one. 140 millimeter deep power supplies are kind of few and far between. They, of course, specialize a thousand in watts. power density. Well, certainly, yeah, they're the ones who yeah. do that. But yeah, it's the densest power supply. I think yeah. it's the Kids, make sure to uh, install your cabling before you install the PSU. 
Although it, with this one, I didn't. I put in the the PSU and then you do have enough space to yeah. sneak it through. You can take off that back panel and then I can just plug it all in, and there was enough space to route the cables down. Nice. So building this thing was great for a mini ITX case. And here's here's just one of the configurations I put in. Uh, it, it's it was great. I had it like this in my living room for a few days, and then I switched it to get a, a, a hotter GPU and huh. It didn't get a popsicle stuck in it or anything while uh, you were no. away? Okay. Nobody covered in painter's tape? Mm-hmm. Uh, no. <laughs> no, not this time. $165, approximately. This one is 163 on Amazon. They're around that price, silver or black. And the Sugo 14 is about f- currently about $30 less. I think for just $30, it's, it's better to get the 15 But if you want that external bay... As I, I scroll up, apparently I don't have very many pictures of the front panel. But Sebastian, you, you need to start front, taking more pictures. I know. There's not enough in here. If you if you can live without this beautiful, solid front panel, you can get that SG-14 and get the uh, external drive bay. So anyway, I gave it our gold award. This is a minimal. There's case. no three and a half inch in there, though. No, they make the Temgen. They're so. a five and a quarter. You can get that. But no three that and a half. We talked about last week. I, it was that other Silverstone that was based on the Temgen. That's yeah, where the they one. put the RAID in, the and RAID controller. Like three and a half inch bay. Oh, and yeah. All that other stuff. It has two lower three and a half externals and three, three, three and a halfs up above, I think. That's, uh, that's it for that case. Uh, that's it. Moving along. Mm. We're going to take a quick uh, ad break here to talk about Upstart, the fast and easy way to help you pay off your debts. Sometimes paying off debt can feel like a total no-win battle, and it doesn't even matter how you got there. For some of you suffering with business slowdowns, there might have been a real crunch in the cash flow. You might have had high interest credit with minimum monthly payments that are practically designed to keep you in an endless cycle of debt. Well, there's a company called Upstart that can help you get ahead of this. To find out how Upstart and their AI lending platform can lower your monthly payments today, go to upstart.com slash pcper. They have a fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan, and it's all done online. You could be paying off credit cards, doing a high interest consolidation, or just refunding personal expenses. Over half a million people have already used Upstart to get a simple, fixed monthly payment. Upstart is different from other lenders. They look at more than just your credit score and consider your income and employment history as well. This means they can offer smarter rates with trusted partners. Available loan amounts will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Their mission is to ensure effortless credit based on true risk because you're more than just a single number. Affordable credit matters. It's a fact of life and you should feel empowered to take control of your debt and financial future. That's upstart.com slash pcper. Don't forget to use our URL so that they know that we sent you over. Go to upstart.com slash PC per and get started today. We're back and we're going to talk about, we're going to, we're going to quiet things down a little bit. Tech power up. Took a look at the be quiet pure power 11. Shh. 750 watt. What is FM? Is it pickup signals? Hold on. It's, it's showing fully up. modular, fully modular. Right. You're on camera. Yes. I was just, I was just trying to figure that out. That's a 650. Yeah. Get out of here with yeah, that 650. Come on. Fully this modular. Right, FM. This was, a, that was a 750, but I just wanted to, am I muted? When we, you know, no, you're not. Come back muted. No, but you're making me think of a different fully FM. modular. All FM. I was going to say is I actually just used this one. So, Oh, that's right. We're going to see yes. that shortly. Yeah. Yes. Well, I was so digging we'll... around trying to find out if you'd done a review of it or not, because I noticed that it was in your uh, little cherry picker toy there. Hey, this isn't a U.S. plug. What is happening here? What is going on here? It's international. I guess so. You know, they're switching power supplies. They can... They're auto... They can We're going to start singing in Russian. Da, 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 the international. Da, 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 da. No. Anyway. Yeah, those are the Thank cables. you for getting me, Josh. Look at all these pictures mm-hmm. of every individual. They are huge cables. Are they? Like, that, that is actually one of the nicest things. I think the shortest one's like 150 millimeters oh, okay yeah but sometimes you is, want the short. drive cables really well, you long. can buy it yeah who yes. is the oem do they say this is the same thing oh this is cw uh, it's like tipo switches uh which aren't necessarily what you want to choose uh, but the rest of it is actually pretty good okay and this is a fairly low cost line right uh, it's 135, I think it was for this or one. 750 full module. I mean, in today's yep. world, where 
eight fifties are now routinely one yeah, fifty, one well. sixty for full modular. That makes sense. That's like twenty dollars less yeah. for the seven fifty. So, What's and yeah, it is the new channel. Well. well, it's eighty plus gold. Okay, but it's also got a cybernetics gold rating. What does that mean? I it's don't have totally. the foggiest. It, it, it's a new. It's a, someone is challenging cool. the eighty plus standard to say oh, that uh, the monopoly. Could be yeah. who's, who's the bad who's the bad AI in the sky 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 what Skynet Net. Skynet Skynet yeah yeah that's it's to you Skynet, by, uh, uh, Cyberdyne Industries exactly this is know. this is done with a German passion for quality and precision I'm just reading that ah uh, German that's it, passion that's what it says Auf Deutsch uh, at our headquarters in Germany innovative engineering concepts premium materials and world class quality make be quiet. Products among I mean, the most silent, reliable, and powerful available. I, the the I'm, exclamation I'm mark after be quiet is the most German thing like oh, ever. Like very. you knew that it was be quiet. <laughs> it very, very much. And it is. response looks pretty good. It's a little below like the Seasonic Prime and Corsair RM 750X here. Yep. But you'll pay a little bit extra for them. Uh, okay. Uh, they also come with 10-year warranties. This guy's got a five, which, you know, for some people is actually kind of annoying. Mm. Uh, but other than that, like, it was brilliant, except that, that when, you, when you're first firing it up and Ooh. you're doing the inrush current, there were, yeah, uh, it, on the 230, it was a bit high. On the 115, it was a bit low. So, mm. you know, then again, I mean, how often are you worried about that? Just when you're not turning it on, right? No, not yeah. unless you're tripping or breakers. So try not to trip breakers. It's it's good. Yes. It's yeah. really easy. So but it, it was good. floating around uh, just over 50 dBA and sitting well under 50 degrees at full load. So it's quiet and cool. But you know what? It's a It fills a, a price point. It's one of those things. You've got a product stack. Yeah. They have stuff with tighter voltage regulation, better current control, higher, like 105 degree capacitors throughout, but you pay a little bit more. When I uh, used this one in my 3D printer build, um, it was very quiet. Every, it was great. We'll see the 3D printer build later. The 3D printer Hint, build. Hint, it's not really it. Did you use Noctua printer. fans in your 3D printer build? No, no, I did not. Hmm. Oh, I mean, uh, wouldn't that just ruin the print? Yeah. Did you 3D print a fan for your 3D printer build? Resident Evil. Oh, uh, you'll you'll have to wait for the book. Resident Evil Village. We talked about this a bit last week. FPS reviews on some testing. The new poster child performance. This is a Fidelity FX performance IQ review specifically from Mr. Brent Justice at the FPS review. And Let's see. What do they have? What's going on here? Who has done some research about this as I look at a Pokemon ad? Well, I mean, it's Peter to you, obviously. I see. So, Fidelity well, FX. Look at all these Fidelity FX algorithms. You've got that FX they have SPD, FX CAS, which is contrasted to Cacao. No. Nope. Contrasted to Cacao. Then the Cacao is the exclusion. Cacao is the same. <laughs> Variable rate shading, ray tracing. Uh, graphic settings. Uh, where? Are, let's get to the meat. Where are the charts? I can get oh, a jump to about the end. four in or so. Okay, four in. Page four. More pop-up ads. Should probably do something about that. Uh, let's it's, see. Yeah. So performance, you know, is just horrible at 1080p with everything cranked. I mean, come on, a mere 132 frames a second. That's with high <laughs> ray tracing enabled. Node ray tracing yeah. is at 258. We're talking. And unfortunately, this gets rid of a bunch of AMD's fancy uh, uh, ambient occlusion because now you're using the ray traced one. Mm. And if you're playing this game, if you turn ray tracing on, by the way, it immediately disables ambient occlusion. You have to turn it manually back on, uh, which you probably should do because your graphics card is going to be able to handle it. Scroll down to the 4K. Okay, 4K. Just go straight to the 4K. This is 1440. Okay. 4K Resident Evil Village, no ray tracing with the 6800 XT on the highest settings, 106.1 frames per second. Ray tracing, wow, look at that. Low, medium, and high has virtually uh, no yeah. 
Are there there? That's the limit. I'm taking it. So there must be something going on here. Yeah, uh, they're they're pairing uh, global illumination and uh, the shadows. They're they're keeping them at the same setting throughout. But yeah, mm-hmm. seriously, 80 frames a second average. There there are probably some nasty little spikes in there, depending. But this is a 4K title that you are well over 60 frames a second on, at with ray tracing, which is just amazing. Here's the NVIDIA side. It's a little bit higher, 98.8. A little bit higher. With none but low, medium, and high. We're up to 85 to 87 frames per second versus 80 to 82 with 6800 XT. But, yeah. but. but they trade places dramatically with ray tracing turned off on, on this yeah. in this title. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, 8 frames per second dramatic, but yes. No, no, no. It's far greater than 8. This I is, mean, by this my is math, 106 is 8 frames per second. No, no, no. no. 98. <laughs> This is with ray tracing turned on. With it no, turned this is with off, off. With off, 98 yeah. versus off, 106.1. Oh, I, Look, I, I know math is Take, take a deep breath. I lean those you're right. eight frames per second. You're right. <laughs> you're right. Uh, yes. I had read something different. I thought I had read something different when I read this article earlier. So, uh, there apologize. Is, apologies. <laughs> there are cases where this is true. But you're, you're fiddling more with ambient occlusion and turning certain things on and off again. But no, I did see some uh, I site which will rename being a name for the moment that was, yeah, AMD just blows NVIDIA away in this game. That, that was what mm-hmm. I had read. So, yeah. hmm. hey, Speaking of NVIDIA and graphics cards, you can actually buy. Well, of course, that means we're going to be talking about mobile. Did you know that under the radar, NVIDIA launched... New GPUs, the RTX 3050 and 3050 Ti are here. They're just for mobile. It's the mobile versions. We don't have a desktop version. When was the last time this happened? We had a mobile variant come out before a desktop variant of something. Because you know there will eventually be a 3050 Ti for desktop. But sure, it's here. It's been announced. It was announced alongside the Tiger Lake H because, of course, they had to do that because of timing and all these skews of laptops coming out all over the place. They're going to have these GPUs in them. But it's going to be based on GA107. And, you know, it's all about cost. Laptops with the new uh, GPUs will start at $799. I'm guessing that's for a 3050. Be more for a, the 3050 Ti skews, but 799 for what is probably a decent mid-range experience, especially if it has a 1080 screen. We're talking, you know, your typical gaming laptop output. Let's look at the numbers here, comparing it to say a 3060 laptop, which has 3840 CUDA cores. This has 2560. They're guessing on ROPs. They're guessing 32, I guess. It's so a third less. Yeah. Yeah. 12 gigabit per second question mark GDDR6 128 bit bus only 4 gigs of VRAM so that's that's like the 1050 Ti hmm and configurable from 35 to 80 watts Samsung 8 nanometer still hmm you don't really need more than 4 I guess if you're just gaming on a laptop at 1080 but you would not want to pair this with a high resolution isn't it funny because it used to be that you'd you wouldn't want to output this to a monitor yeah, remember when you Yikes. would buy a graphics card on a laptop that would have twice the memory of the desktop variant? Mm-hmm. And now, I don't know. Maybe we won't see that anymore. Mm. We won't see 16 gigabyte laptop GPUs <clears throat> this generation. All I can say is, thank goodness some OEMs have contracts where they actually get graphics cards and put it in a system, and you can buy that system mm. with a graphics card. It oh, sucks man. the home, it, you know, it beats the home builders, but, you know, if you're a consumer, you can still get a graphics card at a somewhat reasonable <laughs> price. Somewhat. Just find a desktop system with an APU in it. <laughs> Consider that a really expensive package around the GPU and then give the system in its entirety to a family member or someone that doesn't game. You know, I'm, I'm or not- make them split the cost. I have no kind of deal, no financial relationship with Falcon Northwest, but I did review that one PC last year. The stuff is so nice, and it was always unattainable because the it's a premium attached to a system like that. But not anymore. I mean, if if you price out one of their <laughs> systems and just base it on current component prices, like this is cheaper, and then it, the stuff's <laughs> available. You just when you add it to your 
build, it's like you just see what the lead time is, and it's a longer lead time for certain components, but you can get the stuff. But it doesn't disappear from your card as you're trying to pay for it. Yeah, exactly. It. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can wait four weeks for this build. That's fine. It, it's, it's better than paying three times, four times the MSRP of a GPU to get it off of somebody on eBay. Yeah, yeah. don't do that. Which may have been tested. Maybe it was uh, broken in for you while it was being listed. Maybe that GPU just <laughs> sitting there? No. I can't imagine. It's got to be doing some work. Speaking of doing work, Brett, you reviewed... I did a little work. I want to say I like the warmth. I'm getting a sense of warmth. Audio listeners, imagine a fireplace, that kind of warm, orangish, yellow hue on the walls, yeah. feeling cozy. That's what it cheer- looks like to me. Yeah. It's and the tears of a child as the claw let go of that little stuffed animal for the tenth time, and their parents won't give them an extra quarter to try and play the game again. Mm-hmm. What Jeremy's actually referring to is the size and shape of the ITX case of which I reviewed, which was the Thermaltake Tower 100. Which it does kind of look does, like one of those things. It does bear a striking resemblance to the the uh, <laughs> crane game from the carnival yeah. that has the crane in the roof and you're picking up stuffed animals or or whatnot from the uh, from the floor and trying to drop it. And I'm glad chute. someone mentioned it. Because I would have made an anonymous account to mention it. (laughs) I thought it looked more like, especially when I had the uh, all the panels off, that it looked like a three D printer, you know, with the frame around it. Yeah, I can see that. It reminds me of the uh, Silverstone LDO three that I did a year or two ago. That sort of chimney style stack like this. It's exactly. Yeah, it's exactly what it is. It's got a, a lot of intakes around the bottom, uh, top exhaust. It's an inverted vertical arrangement for an ITX board with the I.O. Uh, pointing up. Same with the graphics card, of course. Mm. It's all pointing up, and they've left a fair amount of room for the graphics card uh, off to the side. Uh, the case really comes apart in what I discovered is a very large number of panels, which includes almost an, uh, an, a, an offensive number of filters. It has nine F- remove filters in it, eight of which are removable. Are these five and a quarter inch bay covers? What is happening? They are not. They oh. are not. That's for a shorter. Size. I know they are, but that's for a shorter graphics card. Or if you're not equipping a graphics card, it's to hide the um, the open area <laughs> on the side. <sky. laughs> it's it's to hide the spot where you can't have a GPU. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if, your you, if you're build. running. If your if your IGP or your APU is enough for you, then you know you can hide your embarrassment. The panels of shame. <laughs> yes, it's nice. Yeah. It's a modesty cover. Yeah, yeah. This uh, that right there is the only non-removable filter. That one is actually sort of a that's a bent metal frame with a non-removable filter, but it is an exhaust, so eh, I'm okay. Yeah, there's it. enough positive pressure behind it. You'd think it wouldn't accumulate dust, but I know in my house. Uh, I mean, it's at the top, dust. so dust is going to kind of settle in from the outside anyway. No, but uh, so there's a shot. Just, yeah, exactly. There's so there's a shot of, from the right top. Here? That's a, included one of the included 120s. Okay. What is the um, circle here? That is an indication that uh, the the instruction manual doesn't actually mention that the fifth screw needs to be removed to to tear down the case. So that's me oh, okay. just saying, reminding people, hey, there's a fifth screw. Okay. So that's what that was for. So I was... Uh, Pointing out that there's a ton of airflow in this. There's uh, airflow all the way around the bottom. Uh, The bottom is, of course, open, and it's a fair amount of height off of the desk, about three quarters of an inch, just over three quarters of an inch off the desk. And if you scroll up just a little bit again, just for me to mention it. Can can I ask you real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Scroll down. Scroll down a little bit. This way? Scroll down. Scroll Uh, down. This way? I think it's going the other way. This one? No. There you go. Did you install Zoltar into that to give fortunes? <laughs> mm. Another, another. I didn't think of that one. Game. Golf clap, sir. Golf clap. Yeah, you need to cut the coin slot in. Along. Yeah. I like Golf it. Golf clap at you. I just wanted to point out that the side intake was right up, pretty much right up against the the GPU, and I take a couple of pictures mm, of which that is later. A good thing, so the right? GPU, absolutely. Let's I had no trouble at, at all with Let's with cooling. More. So this is a picture of like all the teardowns of all the filters and things. Right. And if you scroll down a little bit more, you'll see them like I have them all out on the desk. So they're actually really nicely attached. They've got magnets. They've got a friction fit. They've got clips. Thermaltake really went out of their way to make sure that that was a good deal. I don't know why I they put make, a... These are um, magnetic, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, that one is a purely magnetic one, also on an exhaust fan. I'm not really sure why they did that, but okay. I think intake for PSU with this kind of thing usually. but And it's not. That's an exhaust. Hmm. That's a rear exhaust fan. It's an hmm. optional one. You can remove that fan in order to make room for a couple of vertical mount um, is this your a three and a half hard here? drives. Oh, no, this is removable for a, uh, yes, a rad, that's right? Ex- that's no, that's actually one of the plates that you were asking about earlier to cover hmm. that space. Oh, that okay. space that is behind my hand right there is where long graphics cards kind of flow oh, through into the bottom. Yeah. Look at all So this. here's like a look, all the filters and all the panels. I could not believe how many pieces came out of this ITX case. I mean, just that just so adds many to the pieces. value. Uh, I I made a mention of this that I cannot believe that this could be made inexpensively. This has got to be a fairly expensive case to make. And let me cut right to the chase. The black version is 110. It's okay. 109. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. I know. The Think white version. All the time you'll are... spend washing air filters, though. I, mean, I would <laughs> I know, just put I'm these almost, in the dishwasher at this point. Like, I'm just... almost offended by how many filters there are. I'm like, well, this is nice. Well, and you... then you're like, wait a minute. I hate you. <laughs> yeah. You don't just lick them clean and put them back? No, no, you do not. The key is just to never remove them or clean them. Oh, so here's the back. Here's their back shot where um, if you okay. remove the fan, you can hang a couple of three and a half inches uh, back here. And there's a side mount. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see this. the next picture, I think, is the side mount. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's where you can mount a couple of uh, SSDs on the side. So okay. there's actually room for a fair amount of storage uh, in the case, which, I mean, there better be for the, you know, the size of this. It's actually, it's fairly sizable. Not a minimalist case. Definitely a case for showmanship. Reasonable said, I.O. board let's there. Let's build something in it. Let's. So let's throw in a system. I'm surprised yep, you so, went with Intel. It's, a, it's off brand for you. Um, the 8600K. Yeah, you know, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a stretch. Mm-hmm. Um, I went for kind of a mid thing uh, here with a, on, a, on an older 390 ITX. Uh, and I used one of the uh, Thermal Take Tough Air coolers in this because I, I wanted to give that a try. So there'll be a review of that coming soon. And there's the use of the uh, that Be Quiet 650 that we were talking about earlier. Oh, yeah. And it fits in there really well. A little bit of an unorthodox routing off of the power supplies uh, cables where you have to kind of mm. come out and then go immediately back and then forward again. And you can sort of follow that where it goes uh, reverse along the top of the power supply, up the back a little bit, it, and then out seems- again illogical yeah i said it was a little bit unconventional because but normally you'd think oh you know who's going to see it you don't even need to route it yeah this has that completely open front it's like a showcase for your system it is yes you should be routed the other way well you can see where i've removed the lower floor plate here just so that i can make it easier it looks like it's lifted up as well yeah definitely lifted up and there you can see I've reinstalled the lower floor plate, floor plate. And if you were kind of standing up above the air cooler, which I think I've got a picture here, all of that wiring just disappears. Well, okay, like, but like it could just as easily have disappeared yeah, there if it is. the wiring was facing the back, too. See, it's pretty much gone. The PSU should be up here. The wiring should be back there. I wonder... It could have worked that way, I admit. But I, they would have had to have made a wiring extension like your Sugu case. You know, it's okay to be critical in a review. That's, that's no, absolutely what it is. Need you to do. And I I completely talked about the fact that this was unconventional, a little bit difficult to work with, kind of got to remove some things around, but it worked out in the end. This was something I didn't actually see coming initially is that it was really very easy to route power to the GPU if you were using a longer GPU and it just disappeared. Normally that's a set of cables. Using a longer GPU. Then what about this Well, then panel then you that? don't need any cables at all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> did the I supreme wanted to try. Fit? Did the supreme? It does fit? not. No. It does no. not. And I made mention of that. There's sort of it a limit. In, you know. By the way, it fits in the Sega 15. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you. <laughs> and I made mention of the fact that the cable management was was uh, really easy up the back. And I said it was. I was okay, super so easy. Space there. How much space is barely there? It's like a centimeter. What are we talking here? No, no. It's like there? almost an inch. It's really? just under an inch depth. Okay. Yeah, it's actually quite sizable. Very easy to route cables up up and around the back. And here you and see why they of... routed the uh, power supply the way they did, because they yep. aren't using an extension cable. They're using just the back of it is exposed. So Yep. And they, they're using one of the removable back plates, which I like because it's much easier to install the uh, the power supplies when, when the um, the modular cables are in it. It kind of just slide the whole unit in. Although in an ITX case, it's kind of easy to do anyway. 
that's just a close up of the, this is the first time that I've actually been able to easily use a right angled SATA connector and really? not okay. be totally frustrated. Yeah, that is a right angle SATA. I never SATA even, I, in I use. hate those cables. I get Me rid too. of the right angle ones because they don't fit in anything I hate that I ever them. build. Mm -hmm. They never fit anything. So that's why I took a close up picture of that one. Hey, this is, so this here's is a quite a bit like that LDO3, the way you route the cables out from the top. It's also a lot like that Fantex um, one that I reviewed about a month or so ago, a couple months ago. Mm -hmm. With that, that was also inverted just like this. I made mention in that you might be a little disappointed at your Wi-Fi experience with the um, yeah with the antenna. One of those external top. ones that you can plop up on top or on the desk somewhere. Could be, yeah. But all told, you've really got to kind of be a bit of a showman if you if you want this hanging off the side of your desk like that. Um, yeah, this is some thermal take data that uh, they had on their site that shows exactly what I experienced. Is that, that it handles computer components um, get hot when they're under load? There's that, and it and it handles the heat pretty well. Okay. It uh, pulls in cold air from the bottom and and tosses it out the top and the back. You know, the trash can Mac actually did a great job of of uh, it's it's similar heat experience. Out of the top. Yeah. Yep. And the fact that I used a two two fan air cooler just accelerated the chimney effect for me. So I had no trouble at all. So what's your conclusion? What did you think? That um, I was personally going to move some of my my um, modest gaming uh, equipment into this and I was going to use it. So that was why I gave it. Oh, there's a picture of, of the side mounted uh, GPU with that's easily well, so pulling in air. air. In okay. Yep. So a lot of times you see like fully glassed enclosures and you're thinking, well, that thing can't breathe. Well, they found a way to around that and they put um, plenty of perforated component or um, panels in there. So you like anyway, the I'm going to move $110. I do. Yep. I'm moving my components in there and I'm going to use it EC. as my gaming computer. So, hey, that's the definition of editor's choice. If the editor chooses to use this case, that's, right. that's a pretty strong recommendation. Yeah. So it's, I, I said it was the exact opposite of a minimalist case. It's a, it's a showmanship case. It's a statement case, I think is what I said. It's a statement mm -hmm. case. Oh. You're making a statement. Anyway, well, I like it. I'm making a statement right now. You can. It's time for picks of the week. And Josh is going to start us off. Josh, wake up. It's showtime. Okay. I'm awake. Showtime. Hey. For $46. 502 oh, nice. Hero. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're inexpensive oh. right now. Everybody likes wireless. I, I think wireless them. sucks. Hate wireless. Wireless has caused me more problems <laughs> as a freaking IT systems analyst thing. Uh, uh, the wire. I was like, just plug it in. <laughs> Wired works. My wireless internet's not working. Plug it into a LAN cable. You've got one. <laughs> look at that. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Get your wired gaming mouse. They're inexpensive, high quality sensor in there, good quality components. It feels good. Adjustable weight. How's the clickiness? Oh, adjustable weights. Those are always nice. I like that. Yes, they are. And plus, uh, you know, if you install the uh, Logitech software, you can change the color of the RGBs. Oh, are those the oh, weights are heavy. I like that, a heavier mouse myself. So you like a, a mouse with a with little ass in it. Some heft, if you will. <laughs> See, tuna, tunable weights from 121 weights. to 139 grams. And we're oh. not talking fish, man. Yeah, you might it's not, not tuna think fish. That's significant. No. It is 36 grams. I don't think I'll get the refraction well, off of it. You know what? That's, that's, you know, one gram of sugar, not a lot, is not enough for me. And so 36 grams is, is much better. Honeycomb goods. How do you feel yeah. about 36D? <laughs> um, All right, let's move on. Uh, I, I need to go. And fall. I'll be in my bunk. Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy, what is your pick of the week? Well, I want to know why my video has got such latency to it. I mean, wireless should be able to handle that, right? Mm, uh -huh. you're not yeah, wireless. Humble Bundle. Uh, this week is actually rather impressive. And, you know, I, I, it. What are you eating, Kitty? Uh, but no, this is uh, to help uh, some countries that have decided to ignore COVID and didn't work out so well for them. And Doctors Without Borders and such that are over there help helping. But you get some fun stuff like Into the Breach, Bioshock Remastered, uh, 
Final Cut of This War is Mine, Super Hot if you got a V8 or headset, uh, the original Crusaders King. It's so it's it's a mix of sort of older and newer stuff, but it's it's just a huge mix of games, and you also get uh, about a dozen, half dozen books with it uh, to sort of help you cope with. There are some strange people that don't like being, you know, away from people and in a comfortable position yeah. alone. I, I, so this will help I them. Felt no different, honestly. Yeah, no, it, it's been brilliant. And, and a couple red of a Sonya. shampoo things. <laughs> and, yeah, a red Sonia. Two red Sonias, or no, sorry, the other one's uh, lock and key. And a shampoo. Uh, the backup pro is decent software. Uh, getting it for the 26 bucks that they're charging you for is pretty good. The photo optimizer I haven't played with, but if you're of the type that I want to take a picture and make it, I want to push the enhance button and make it look prettier, I'm pretty sure it'll do a good job for you there. And hip hop, you know, you need a music maker for hip hop. Overall, it, you know, it's for a great char- set of charities and you get an amazing amount of just random stuff with it. And Humble is really good at letting you gift it. So you've got Into the Breach, you can give it to someone else. Uh, you've actually played Baba Is You, well, you can give it to somebody else. So it's 20 bucks. 20 bucks for all that stuff. Yeah. Well, who's next? Brett. Yeah, I picked a, a interesting uh, FreeSync 34-inch curved display this time around because it is the very same display as uh, an AOC one that I own, the CU34 G2X. So this is the very same Samsung uh, 1500R 34-inch 1440p 21 by 9 um, 144 hertz. Uh, monitor, but it's the Lenovo. I happen to notice that a lot of, unfortunately, everything's going up in price. And this particular display, I think, sits at a sweet spot for those who might want an ultra wide because it is comfortably below $400, where everything else that is either um, above $400, $450, 470 or for about the same, but doesn't meet these specs. And even if they come close, you can kind of do some comparisons and say, oh, well, this is like also a 34-inch display. You'll find out that the it's like an, a Gen 1 panel that tops out at 75 hertz or 100 hertz. Or I don't know, that Westinghouse D. one is 100, uh, 100 hertz of clockable to 120. But anyway, Westinghouse. That's, Westinghouse. Westinghouse. Uh, that's, a, that's the first gen. Yeah, that's the first. That's their first gen panel, and I, I'm familiar with that particular panel. I'd say the one that obviously Samsung came out with. I think it's the Samsung one that came out with with first. I don't know if it um, also is. Was that maybe a 1080? Might have been a 1080p, 3440, 1080. That was, was a 3440 it, it? by 1440. 1440. Yeah, it's, a, yeah, it's true. 100 hertz, overclockable yep. too. Yep, but anyway, now this will, this is a pretty good price. Uh, four hundred forty-four hundred. No, but you have to you have to be okay with that. It's pretty curved. Fifteen hundred R is pretty. It is, and it's I. It's it's almost I not, voluptuous. I have not been. It's I'll definitely a it. change when I sit in front of it for versus a couple of flat monitors, but it really envelops you when you're playing games. It's a really great experience for game playing. And I, I don't know if this is a great productivity monitor if you're doing a lot of layout because, again, it's curved. And if you're dealing with a lot of layout stuff, you probably want straight lines. So this might not be for you. Depends on the kind of productivity that you do. Uh, but for games, I think this is a really, really good monitor. The Lenovo one's a little bit different than the AOC. It has no built-in USB hub. And it only has a single uh, DisplayPort 1.4 and a single HDMI 2.0. Mean but otherwise, it's the same panel. Lower? Usually, less bells uh, and whistles means perhaps lower. Latency. No, it's Lenovo. It, 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 it's a four microsecond um, display clock, you know, as opposed to the AOC one, which is one. Oh, okay. Let's but see. I'm not yeah, sure whether that's in what more. mode. There's, it's, there's three modes. There's a, like an, a very aggressive versus an overdrive mode and a normal mode. And what those really map to internally, I don't know. You got to play around with it. By the way, I have to say, Brett, when you when you say things like it's really a really good experience for game playing, I'm not immediately thinking, "Oh, that guy's a real gamer." Game playing, oh, well, I guess. Game playing, yeah. Game, it's for all that game playing you're going to do. For all the gaming that you're doing, I mean, you know, I there's there's ten different ways to talk it. 
<laughs> the, the, the monitor experience is probably outstanding for productivity. I worry about that input latency for gaming. Well, Vim is a very, you know, worried about input latency. Vim? Vim? Oh, sorry. Oh, you know, the Linux, I'm sorry. Uh, command. Yeah. I, did, did you editor. say VI? Yeah, VI I mean, improves. Yes, I know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> oh, you're probably an Emacs guy, aren't you? No, I'm a VI person. Nano. I'm total nano. Screw oh. you. Why do I have to go to Vim enough. when I got nano? I don't have to you learn any keystrokes whatsoever. I like hitting five or six keys in a row and like nothing happens, but I've just done yeah. a tremendous amount. Yes. <laughs> I think we're done. Unless you want to throw a pick. You don't down. have a pick, Sebastian? Uh, he never has no. a pick. What's wrong I, with you, man? My, you my never pick have is... a pick. You know, I cannot... You know what? Queen Elizabeth said, I am not here to make windows into men's souls. But you know what? I'm looking at your product picks as a peephole into your soul. And so far, nothing. I mean, it just... You know, he's he's got a every, point. Every week. I don't have a pick. I don't want to do that. I don't want to expose an inner part of me to you, the viewers, my colleagues, the done? people who, you know, expose everything about themselves for fame and profit. 